All right, welcome to the Social Media for Real Estate Agents podcast, where we find rock stars in social media, and then we have them show us realtors how we can use social media to increase our business. I'm Khaled Nathan Aleem, licensed real estate agent in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And today, my guest, my special guest is from Mexico. She's in Mexico right now, okay? Yeah. And her name is Vane Monroe, or Vane. I think I said it wrong. Um, <laughs> this rock star has over 6,000 subs on Instagram, has over 10,000 subs on YouTube. So we brought her here so she can give us her her uh, Mexican flavor and um, kind of break down what she's doing. Welcome to the podcast, Manette. Thanks a lot, Kelly, for having me here. I'm super excited to share some of my story with you and, and, and your audience because it's been a, a great year last year for me using social media. So thank you for having me here. And I'm saying hi from Tijuana, so I hope you guys know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, this podcast is geared towards real estate agents, okay? Um, so how did you become a real estate agent? How did you come across real estate? Yeah, it's it's pretty funny, Kelly, because um, actually I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've always been an entrepreneur. I, I major in marketing. So since day one, I went out of college. I've been doing uh, digital marketing. So I, I, I have sold and done all the businesses you can imagine. <laughs> so one time, I, one day I, um, I run across a friend that I haven't seen from, uh, not college, before college. Um, high school. Oh, yes, from high school. So she's like, she married a guy from Tijuana, from where I am, but they, they moved to LA. So she told me she was a, a broker right there. And I'm like, Wow, I always wanted to be a real estate agent, but I, I wasn't sure about that. So she's like, "Oh, you will be perfect, a bigger, uh, perfect fit." You, I need someone in San Diego, and I'm like, "Well, I'm not an American. I don't have a license. But how about if I help you, you know, with your business and, and social media? What do you do?" And she's like, "I don't do anything." And so I just went in, you know, in YouTube when I got um, after that meeting, and I. I just wrote like Facebook ads for realtors because I knew a lot of things, how to run, you know, Facebook ads and all these things, okay. but not in the real estate uh, world. Right. So guess who I found? It was Mike Sherrard. <laughs> oh, wow. and, and I started like looking at all his videos and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I, I would like to do this in Mexico because I didn't see anyone doing it. So I just uh, wrote him. We had a call and I'm like, I want to do this mic in Mexico. And we're like, this is before we joined EXP, each of us. Okay. So we're like, okay, so we're going to like do mentorship or coaching to brokers. We were thinking about that. But then I, th and he's like, you have to do a YouTube channel. I'm like, you're crazy, Mike. I've never <laughs> been, a, I mean, I'm super, you know, I can go, I, I can speak whatever, but not a person, a type of person that, you know, take selfies or do videos and that stuff. Okay. And like, but I didn't hesitate. He told me to, and I'm like, okay, so I have this knowledge in marketing. I have this experience, but I, I thought if I want to do this, I have to sell something. Right. So in Mexico, it's so different than in the U.S. You don't need a license to be a, a realtor, but I had friends that had a, that had a, a brokerage. So I went okay. to him and like, so I want to sell something like a pre-sale construction something mm -hmm. like that. Like, okay, I want to do this. So I, I super specialized in that pre-construction and I implemented what I knew. And it was like, Khalid, I sold my first condo, I think in less than a month. And oh, in wow. that month, because I started using uh, social media, uh, like organically too, like people started like my, you know, my uh, inf circle of influence, like, mm -hmm. oh, so I want to buy a house. I want to, uh, I want to buy land. And I'm like, <laughs> I just got like three weeks in this business. Right. So then I got like this land that was like so difficult because it had a, such a great price and a lot of players wanted to, you know, to buy it. But I was the first one and I'm like, I didn't have no experience. Imagine this. And, and I'm like, I want like the land for my client. And I closed the same day, like in one month. I closed the, the land and the condo. So from that point on, I thought I can do whatever I want, you know? So that's how I started in, in, in real estate, like with Mike and my friend and this. And it was like something I didn't even plan. So I've been in this business for two years now. Okay, awesome. So I think I heard you say that you don't need a license to sell real estate in Mexico. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. 
Yes. Gotcha. So from what you just said, it's like you were you were already doing digital marketing. Yes. You were already doing into Facebook ads and um, but you didn't have a YouTube channel. No, no, I didn't have any. No, no. Okay. That's it. No, I didn't have any. No. Okay. You were just doing ads. Like you said, you ran into a, a friend who was doing real estate yes. and then you guys started looking and you found our mentor, Mike, and um, you kind of got with him and he kind of, I guess he kind of took what you guys were doing and then took it to another level. Yes. He is like, he is like, okay, let's be partners. Let's do this courses in Spanish. And so it was pretty funny because I felt like, you know, in the movie, the credit kid, like when okay. you, oh, Daniel San, oh, oh, I really made it, Mr. Megan. He's like, no, now you have to do this. <laughs> oh my God. That's how I felt when I was in my course in Spanish. But uh, okay. I think what he made me realize, and it's very funny, Kelly, because I'm 46 and I think I had to find some time in my life, Mike, like just had to be the person who told me or helped me found my why, because okay. I, I, I didn't know I love to teach mm -hmm. like I do. So my, my YouTube channel is the same as Mike, but in Spanish, I, I teach realtors how to implement social media in their real estate business. So I, in almost not even at two years, I, I have, I have grown to 10,000 followers. I know when I uh, talked to Mike, he told me it took me about five years to get to 1,000 and I did right. it before one year. So, right. but I think it's because of his mentorship, what I, I knew and because I take action, I just, and it was more difficult because he doesn't speak Spanish at all. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I had to study, study, study. So that's how I started with my YouTube channel. Okay. So are you taking the content and then translating it? And then you're giving your like style or your twist to it. Yeah, for the course, yeah, I, like I had to do make the course, but you know, tropicalize it to Mexico because it's so different how we do make business over here. But for my YouTube channel, like maybe like the first ten videos, Mike told me like oh, you should do this one, this one, and this one. And then from that point on, I do all my videos. I have done 170 videos, and I know because I have them oh. like da, 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 you know, I just right. did the 170. So I, I make two videos per week. I okay. never, uh, what is, I never, uh, fail to make them even when, you know, I have two kids, a husband, okay. dogs and everything I have to do. And I have 106 agents now in my revenue share. So it's like, I have a lot of things to do, but I have to do them. And I, I don't uh, miss any of my videos. So consistency is probably looks like one of your strongest traits. Now, what a lot of real estate agents run into is content or lack of content. If you're making two videos a week, okay, the first month, first two months, first three months, you probably got content, but where do you find your content at? Yeah, I know. Like for me, because I'm, I'm, and sometimes it's like, what am I going to talk today? Yeah. I already did like uh targeting, you know, it's like, so I just search and, and, the easiest way I think of it is if you hear your audience and your or your clients, it's like what what do they need to hear? What are what are their problems? How can I help them solve them? How can I get a connection with them of trust? So I think mm -hmm. if you put it in like in a paper, you will have so many content you can share to to your audience. It's just sometimes we overthink it. That that's what I think. Like people overthink where they're going to share, but then it's just it just pops like your creativity. Like for me, like I'm, I'm just going to go into like for reels, for example, when mm. I started doing Instagram reels, I'm like, what am I going to say? You know, I'm like, this is so difficult. So because at the beginning, when I started doing reels, it's like, I will go and see reels and I'm like, what can I say in this reel? You know, and mm. I, I, it will take me hours to think what I was going to write in that reel. And then I wasn't being effective. So one day I said, I'm going to do reels since today. So I don't know who, when I'm going to finish. So to each day I have to have a reel, right? So what I do now in my strategy is like, I just scroll, 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 like maybe 15, 20 minutes a day. I mean, mm -hmm. see what other creators are making and uh, look for trending ideas or something like that. And I just save, save, save. And then I will go, oh, I have like five minutes right now. I can do a reel. So I just make the reel my own. And then when I have time, I'm like, okay, what am I going to say? 
you know? So I have so many content in my in my social media that I repurpose my, repurpose my content. I just go, oh, in this, bit, in this reel, I could say it's something I already posted maybe two months ago or maybe even last week. People don't see all your content every day. And if you do it in a twist in a different form, they don't even notice, right? Or you're just going to say, tell them again the same thing and they get they want to have more information about that. So I don't know, you start getting more creative once you start practicing and practicing and practicing and where to look for your resources. Like I can see some uh, influencers that, that make great content, even if, if it's not for realtors, I can look for people that make uh, digital marketing strategies, right? So that's how I look for content. Awesome. So just to rephrase as far as what you just said, and you do some of the same things that I do. You're just looking at what other creators are doing and then put your own twist to it at some point in time. So you don't have to keep going over and over and over because I think a lot of us real estate agents, we're in our own head like, OK, well, everybody knows everything already and they have probably seen this 50 billion times already. But the algorithms don't work like that. The yeah. algorithms might show your stuff here or might show your stuff there. So it's not that everybody sees it. Even if they're a follower, they they may not see it. So if yes. you do the, even if you do the same thing over and over again. Um, there was one guy that I seen, um, this was on TikTok, where he was saying that he took one TikTok and did it 10 times. And he just changed a little here and a little there. And some of them got hundreds of likes and some of them got hundreds of thousands of likes. Wow. But it was the same TikTok. So he just repurposed it 10 times because the algorithm, I mean, we don't know how the algorithm is going to feel today. I know, um, I know. <laughs> if it likes us or it doesn't like us. So no, that's that's um that's awesome. Now, with your YouTube page, 10,000 subscribers. I know. That's not an accident. Okay? Oh, and that no. comes from a person who's currently building a YouTube page uh now. You don't get that on accident, okay? Yeah. What what do you think is the reason that you got to that number so quickly? Yes, I think it's a few things. The first one, the first one is obviously consistency. That's mm -hmm. for me the first one. But also in the first place is giving uh, your value proposition. Because if you don't give value, you will, get, you will get zero, right? So that's uh -huh. super important. But then you have to know how to optimize your channel. Because if mm -hmm. you don't know how to do it. Okay, okay. But what I love of YouTube, Kelly, it's this... I love the algorithm of YouTube. Mm -hmm. it's, so <laughs> it's so different from uh, from Instagram and all and, and and other ones because it's like very mathematical. If you do like one plus one is two, and you okay. will make it. like sometimes I just post one video today and I'll already ranking number one in that video. Wow. And imagine I'm competing with a lot of uh, content creators around the world. Right. And if right. you are a realtor. You have a huge opportunity to just um, be number ranked number one in your current market. So it's so easy. Like I have helped, you know, our uh, the story of Sumin Kim, for example, in our team. But I have helped uh, one guy. Right, he's like my baby. I told him, I tell him all the time, you're my baby. So in two months, he, I think he already had like, I don't know, maybe four hundred subscribers. But he had like in one video, he already had like almost 6,000 views and getting, I think I had like 30 um, leads from YouTube. He hasn't done any paid, any paid ads or anything in other platforms. He's like, I'm going crazy in just doing eight videos in two months. It's like, so you guys, like if you're a realtor, if you're not doing YouTube, which is the platform where I prefer, like for organic positioning your, yourself and, you know, mm -hmm. like, showing your, the, yourself to other people that connect with you. It's so different from maybe Facebook that it's just an ad. And, right. and this part is you, is you sharing your part and, and people connect, connecting with you. Now, are you just doing, are you just doing content or are you doing like vidIQ or TubeBuddy as far as the optimization of keywords? Are you researching the words before you actually do the video? Like, like take me through the background of the video before you actually shoot the video. 
Yes. Like, for example, some videos I will go in and, and search, but imagine I wanted to search like so people can can understand because people sometimes just publish a video and they have this title that is not searchable. You know, it's mm -hmm. like I have been I, I have seen like imagine you put like uh, an address street and that's it. So who's the searching for that in YouTube? No one. So uh, you have to like search. Okay, I'm gonna talk about imagine like tips for sellers, right? Okay. So I will just write down on YouTube in the search engine like tips for sellers. You no. Know? So you will see it will come up for all these videos, and I will go through the ones that have more views. It doesn't mean you, because sometimes you can have a huge channel, but they don't have the, that that much views in that particular video so i will not look to that one i will look for more views and check maybe one three to get some ideas and of course i use vidiq that's my my favorite i started with the free one and then i upgraded to the pro one that it's 50 dollars a month right. and then imagine i like that your video so i will look into your tags i will see if you have tags or not if you have tags and you're ranking number one, I will just copy them and paste them into my, into, <laughs> I mean, right. do it, why not? But sometimes right. I see some, some videos are like maybe number one, but they don't even have good rank rankings or, or tags because they just put it right there maybe five years ago. But then here comes Vane and I'm just doing better ranking. And if you search in my channel, and if I go to VidIQ, if you put like, Facebook ads for realtors uh, in Mexico. Imagine I will lead a top creator in every in every term I will look for, look for because I'm doing it like super smart. And I will be in one day I will rank uh, before the people that are ranking five years ago. So I will like take the title and look up at the titles. When you have uh, something like VidIQ, you can see in your in your tags which one is better. So I will pick that one to be my title. You know, mm, one or two. like it ranks it. Yes, yeah, because okay. Vidiq will tell you those those options, and I will just use the ones that are ranking better. And okay. then you have obviously you have to have a great art, a creativity art. Like your thumbnail should be something that catches your eye, because people now that's what I want to ask you about yeah. because I went in your channel, and that's what really catches me is your thumbnails. It seems like all of them are original. All of them have. A great appeal so is that you doing the thumbnails or are you outsourcing that no i'm outsourcing it. kelly i'm not a designer so i think you have to invest in your business that's a problem that many realtors don't want to you know pay ten dollars to a thumbnail and it will take maybe five hours for you to make a thumbnail with someone mm. you pay someone fifteen dollars and they can do like awesome you know thumbnail so i pay someone to do that for me yes Okay. Is that person off of like Fiverr or where'd you find this person at? No, you know, um, I have my own agency now. So I have people that, that make them to me. Yes. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So yeah. I have a team that does it, does that. But Fiverr is a great place to look for, for things in Mexico. Yeah. And there's another one like for Latinos that a lot of people use. It's called Workana. So a lot of people uses that too. So I think it's a great place to find freelancers. Gotcha. Now, this is my own question because um, I find a lot of real estate agents, maybe some who are not from the U.S. or not native to the U.S., they don't get on social media or use social media as a tool because they're maybe their accent. They think people won't um, vibe with them because of their accent. What do you say to somebody who says, well, I'm not from here, so that's the reason I'm not going to use social media because I think people won't connect with me because of my accent. What do you say to those folks? I mean, I don't think that they should care about what I th think. It's always if you're if you're a Mexican in the U.S., there are a community there. There are a lot of Latinos, so specialize in that community. Because I've seen with my baby, and when I told you, he's in Houston, and he started like he didn't know if he should go in English or in Spanish. Mm. And I'm like, mm. you should niche to Spanish because there are a lot of people looking to invest in Houston, from Mexico, from other countries, Latin America, you know, and people that live around there that will connect better with you because you're that Mexican or whatever, you speak Spanish. Right. So he noticed that he made videos in English and Spanish and it was like Spanish. So you should 
you know, you should leverage that if you are in a, in a country with not a lot of people speak Spanish. So go for Spanish or your, your native language, because there will always be a community or someone from another country trying to invest in that city. So I think that's, wow. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. You just changed my whole business. You changed <laughs> my whole business. My uh, wife speaks French and she speaks Arabic also. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to put her to work and get yes. her to start making ads for me yeah. in those languages. It's, it's, it's pretty easy because Okay, English, they're like maybe 20 agents doing that. Well, let me do it in Spanish, in French, in whatever. Yes. Right. Right. That makes that, that definitely makes total sense. Now, you said that you have 100, 100 plus um, people in your organization right now. You also have a uh, digital marketing agency. You come across a lot of agents. What's some big mistakes or what's some common errors that agents make when they first get on to digital marketing or or trying to use social media? What, what are some common mistakes that they do? Yes, I think first they don't study and they want to have results day one. So <laughs> that's like the first huge mistake. Like, ah, push publish in my ad and it's not working and blah, blah, blah. Mm. So they didn't study like, okay, who is your, your second, your, your niche? What are you selling? Uh, how are you going to communicate? How is your, What's your value proposition? Um, or they just make so many changes in their ads. They don't even uh, let uh, the algorithm work because in the US, the algorithm is like, that's why you, you guys have to put the category, whatever. In Mexico, right. you don't need to do that. What do you okay. think? In Mexico, we don't have that accurate information. In the US, you do. So uh, I would Special category. Yes, yes, yes. So I wouldn't worry about that because isn't it true like if you're like scrolling in your um facebook or instagram account and you see mm -hmm. something you like and mm -hmm. you scroll through it like in maybe 20 minutes later you will have so many ads of that kind you know like if you see right. a phone or shoes whatever then you're like what even if right. you see something that amazed me one time i was in this place and we were talking about a brewery that the there was in Mazatlan, imagine, I was in Cabo last year, and we're talking about this brewery in another city of Mexico. We were talking, Khalid, and then I'm scrolling my Instagram, <laughs> and that brewery from that city yeah. appeared in myself. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, they're <laughs> hearing me. <laughs> I, I mean, it's not that I like it, but it amazes me that people don't understand how social media, it's great to do business. But I think that the first error is that, that they don't have, they don't study or they don't take action. Uh, they don't give any value to their audience. So you have to give something to them so they can trust you. If you give a, you know, seller's guide, buyer's guide, you do a webinar, just a consult, free consultation. There's so many things you can give to your audience so they can start, you know, getting to that funnel and then you can use all the strategies of targeting that are remarketing or retargeting and all those goodies that Instagram, Facebook platform gives us. Right. There's some shoes that's following me around all of my platforms now. I clicked on it one time <laughs> and it's just like, I, I really want these shoes. But it seems like every, every platform that I jump on, these shoes are staring me right in the face. And I'm like, okay. At some point in time, I'm going to get them. But no, you're absolutely right about the algorithm. A lot of people, they'll, they'll jump on to Facebook ads or they'll jump on to YouTube and they want instant gratification because a lot of times that's our culture. OK, we put a dollar into the machine that we want five dollars back. But you have to nurture that prospect. Um, yes. It's just like your spouse. If you went to your spouse the first time that you've seen him or her and was like, hey, I want to marry you. They probably would have smacked you in the face or something like that. So you didn't. You dated them. You got to know them. And then gradually, you okay, this is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with. It's, it's kind of the same thing with um, buying homes or anything for that matter, as far as just going up to people. And it's just like, hey, yes, this is me. Buy a home. Well, I don't know you like that right now to buy a home, you know, but to gradually get through them. So. You mentioned your um, digital agency. Do you guys specialize in Instagram or Facebook or just digital marketing just in general? 
You know, we specialize in developing your brands. Just mm. develop your brand, your personal brand, and then we can help you with content or maybe uh, editing your videos or stuff like that. Yeah, Kelly, I don't, I don't want to get into like ad campaigns and all that because I already did it in the last, uh, my past mm. time in my life. Okay. That's why I have my my academy, like Mike. I have mine. So mm -hmm. if you wanna, you know, learn how to do strategies, Facebook ads, and all that stuff. You buy my course. So that's how I do it now. I just help you develop develop a strong brand. So that's how, that's what I do now. Yeah. Now the course is in Spanish, right? Yes, in Spanish. Okay. So all of my Spanish speaking folks, um, hopefully you understand me, but I will have all of her contacts in the description. And if you do want to um, get her course, um, hopefully our um, promo code will be social it'll be probably um social agent it's usually social agent so hope hopefully she'll she'll give uh the the listeners some sort of discount if they do use that um social agent and um but again all of the information will be in the description so awesome awesome information you definitely changed the course of my business as soon as my wife gets home I'm like <laughs> all right well listen <laughs> this, <Poor girl. laughs> this is what we need to do we're gonna have to uh, corner the Arabic speaking market, and we're gonna have to start making up ads uh, to so so we can really get into that niche, so we can help raise the income of our family. Yeah, you <laughs> will, you will, yeah, definitely, you will. Yeah, it's very important, and and you will be like the only ones, so it's super easy. You, you think right, about it, right? Yeah. I'm I'm pumped now. I'm super yeah, pumped. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, I'm glad I can help. Yes. Awesome. We usually close this out by by uh, giving the agents something that they can take away from. And again, I'm going to have a playbook. I'll have a playbook on a separate website where agents can go through and each chapter is going to be with each guest. And they're going to have a play, almost like a football playbook, where they can watch this episode, do these steps. And after they've done watching this episode, they can go implement. So what play would you give agents that they can use right now today? Yeah, I think definitely for me, I think YouTube. If I if I were in your shoes, like mm -hmm. start um the first, you should pay for your personal brand. Go on mm -hmm. Fiverr, go into Fiverr, go whatever you want, because that's the beginning of people be, uh, believing in you, right? It's something that your eyes that do, right? Um, like okay. if you see like something professional, you will think you will build trust at the beginning, and then. YouTube has, uh, as Mike always says, is one video can prospect for you three, mm. one year uh, or 24 right. hours a day. So I think if you really understand the algorithm of, of YouTube and you start giving value to your audience, because, you know, guys, like buying a house is not that easy. Like it's mm. like for more, a lot of people is they only buy one house in their life and right. Sometimes people have some bad experiences. So if you're the guy that or girl that starts developing this strong brand and starts searching for content that will help your sellers or buyers or investors uh, to make a decision. So I think that will be the point when you start organically giving this content and then you can repurpose this content to Instagram or Facebook, whatever you want to do. But start with one with one social platform, I, if I were you, because I started with YouTube, I just started recently doing more in Instagram. So I think YouTube will, at the long time, you will have more leads and you will have a strong brand. And if you're super niche, you will see, you will see with your wife, you will get so many leads from that. So you will have to search for, as we said, for something that is searchable, have mm -hmm. a strong title, have a strong thumbnail, your description is super important to have a lot of hashtags in there too. And then have your hashtags. You have to uh, buy or use vidIQ if you you would like. And then start from that point and see what happens. But I know if you follow those steps, there are so many information how to use YouTube there. I think I, that's what I will do if I started right now as a realtor and I wanted to start in one social media platform. Okay. Just to dig a little bit more when you talked about maybe going on Fiverr or doing your personal brand. So you're saying like to kind of reach out to a, um, a branding expert wherever you can find them as far as to get your 
your personal branding together first. Is that what you meant? Yes. Just like okay. to have your brand sheet, you know, where you have all your colors, your icons, your 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 sign, uh, your pictures. Um, and and like in my agency, what we do is like we in, we have an interview like with you, like also oh, where your objectives, where your personality, what do you, what's your value proposition, what do you want to share with your audience, and then and then they give us this like uh, branding, like uh, Mark, uh, I forgot the name of it in Spanish, in, in English, but whatever, it's just a questionnaire they have to fill in, and and in that that's how we we can inspire and what we can develop for you and then with that brand sheet that is like your um your birth certificate you know sherry is like with that you can do anything even if you go with someone to edit your videos with someone to that makes your content if you have that they can go from there to make everything the same and you're like uh your consistency and then you're the same person in all the the, the platforms of social media yes Gotcha. And, and that's a good point because now you see consistency in a person's brand on each content, on each platform. So it's not where you're going to LinkedIn and you have basically nothing, but then you yeah. go to Instagram and it looks like you're a king realtor. Yes, so yes. If, have you heard that? I don't know if in, in English this word uh, works, but it, uh, like omnipresence. Yes. Yes. Yeah, like if you go and if you look for me, like in LinkedIn, in TikTok, in Facebook, and Instagram, YouTube, even in, uh, the other day, I don't remember where, but I'm the same name in all my platforms. I have the same profile picture. I have all my content the same. So everyone knows this is me. Even like if you go into Google My Business, you will find me. So it's imagine if you have all these tools that are free, 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 and wow. someone uh, gets into an ad that you're doing and they're like, who is this person? So when they go through Google, they were going to go like, whoa, who is that girl? I want to work with her. It's just um, perception. You know, it's something very weird. Like, because like, as you say, like now people, I remember when Mike got to 10,000 followers. Oh, wow. Was like, wow. You know, and it's perception. Now that I have, 10,000 followers for you is perception. For me, it's like, I want to get to 100,000, whatever that, I don't know how to say it in English, right. but it's just, but people like start seeing you as someone that is really uh, important or whatever. It's just perception, but it's just because right. you're doing this, the things you started when you had one follower. For me, it's the same, you know, it's, it's pretty weird, but it's just perception. Right, right. Awesome, awesome. Well, awesome interview, man. Well, what I really got from this, again, is to niche down as much as you can. Whatever your difference is, kind of own that difference and kind of speak to those people with those differences also. And um, just be consistent. Consistencies. And like you said, that personal brand, have your personal brand be, be strong and be the same across the Yes. Across all of the platforms. Yeah, so. least have fun doing it because if you're not having fun, you you will not have consistency. Don't be afraid of the camera. It takes just consistency to go <laughs> through the camera to you know to get that fear uh, past you. I, I always tell my my team like, come on, guys, because they think I'm like I just was born to do this. I'm like, oh my god, yeah. go to my videos, go through my one first video that I did in, in, in YouTube. And then I'm like, it's not bad uh, because I was on point, you know, you have to go on point and not go like there and there and there. But uh, right. I, for me, I seem nervous to them. I don't look nervous, but you know, it's one of the videos that has more views from that point. And then I go, okay, let's go to my second month. And I'm like, when does this happen? I don't know. Like what? And then if you go to like two months, three months, four months, it's like, I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. Talking. Like, <laughs> right. It's just practice. It's just, it's you, not the other people. The other people don't know you. So it's just right. you, your, your own judgment. So just forget about that. You're going to get so many good things from YouTube. I mean, I don't know if you saw me on YouTube or in a group, but I have, I have calls every day with people that wants to work with me because they saw a video on YouTube. So that's why I love YouTube. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Cause what you said just made, just made another question come into my mind as far as conversion. How are you converting 
these people that you do get in from your YouTube page or your Instagram? Do you have any techniques for real estate agents as far as how to convert these people? Yes, I have uh, all the time. I have my call to actions all the time. That's very important. What do you want to do? So have your Calendly, have your link tree, have everything there. So people just click and they can go like, for example, if you want to go into our team, the agents Wolfpack, or you can push a button and you will have a Zoom call with me. If you want to buy my course, so you push a button and you can, you have, want to do a branding, you can do that if you want to. So everything that you want people to, to know, you have to write it because people don't know and it right. make it easy for them. Like, boom, WhatsApp, like in Mexico, we use a lot of WhatsApp, push that, that click and click that button and you will be with me. So that's, I think that's automate all your, what you want to do. So, for me, Kelly is like, oh, what do I have to do today? Okay, I have this, but I don't do anything. They do it, not me. So right. that's how I. It's easier, and there, a lot of apps are free. All of them are free. Right. So, yeah. All right, awesome. Well, this has been very informational, and again, all of her information will be in the description, and a link to the course um, will be in the description also. So, I want to thank you for your time. And um, is there anything else that you want to leave the agents with? No, just uh, follow your dreams, work hard, take action, and you will get wherever you want to go. Awesome. Well, this is Social Media for Real Estate Agents. I'm Khalid.